Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another Valentine slash non-Valentine card. <laughs> this one is for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge, which is very Valentine colors. It was red and pink and black and white. I will have a link to the challenge in my blog post. So I had this Botanical Heart stamp set sitting on my desk along with the Coordinating Wafer Die set um, from the last video I had done where I'd use one of just one of the wafer dies and I kept looking at it and I was like you know what this would work perfectly for this color challenge plus I had this like this faceted heart stamp in that set and I was like ooh I don't think I've used that yet I've done a couple videos using this set already and I'll try to remember I'll link to them in the upper right corner throughout the video but hadn't used this stamp that I can remember anyway so I stamped it onto a scrap of Distress watercolor paper and I used my anti-static powder tool, clear embossing ink, and then I heat embossed it with uh, Simon's Detail Gold embossing powder. And then to color it in, I'm just using some Candied Apple Distress Ink, just smushing the mini ink pad onto my little plastic Ulta New palette and then picking up that ink with a Detail Water Brush. And then I just paint each little um, section since there's that heat embossing, it's got that raised edge and you can't really tell, I don't think from like on the video, but like I was using a fair bit of water and just letting it do its thing. Like I wanted the color to be pretty intense. Like candied apple is red, red. And so I just picked up like a lot of the ink with the wet water brush and then just painted it and that's it. Nothing fancy. I did consider, I was like, ooh, this would look really cute too, just to like do uh, just a messy wash and like splatter, splatter, all the things. <laughs> but instead I just painted it and left it. And some areas, you know, have more of the ink. Some areas have a little bit more water. So you get those just different variations, even though this was all one ink pad. So I just went along and filled this in. It's one of those like sort of mindless things. I really love like I've done other videos with like some of the geometric back backgrounds and that sort of thing where you just kind of zone out and just fill in each section. It's almost like a paint by number kind of idea. You know, you don't really have to put too much thought into it and it just does its own thing. So that's what I did with this. I added a little bit more ink, even though it looks like I have a lot of my palette, it was getting very watered down. So I wanted more, you know, that concentrated color. So I just smushed it a couple more times and then kept picking it up with my paintbrush until everything was completely filled in. And then I let them completely dry and then die cut them with one of the coordinating wafer dies for the set. And then I also decided to do a little bit of ink smushing because there's other little heart wafer dies in the coordinating set that are just like standalone heart dies that you can use with the sentiments and different things but I was like ooh, I could like you know I started thinking I was like I could die cut like pink cardstock etc but then I was like why not just make some ink smushy backgrounds and then die cut those because I like the texture so that's what I did so I'm just working on one of my um, non-stick craft mats here and I smushed uh, the new kitsch flamingo distress ink sprayed it with water and then I'm just doing some ink smushing with a couple more scraps of the Distress watercolor paper. So you spray it with water, press the cardstock into there. I dry each layer with my heat tool and then you just keep pressing. And I can't even remember the last time I've ever done this with just one color. Usually, you know, I'm doing like three colors, five colors, whatever, you know, cause it's a color challenge or I just want to squeeze on as many colors as possible. And I'm always talking about like mud, you know, you don't want mud. You don't want the colors to mix and turn gray and brown and sludges. Tr start with one color. With Distress Inks, it just try, start with one color and then add a second color. You know, it's fun doing just the one color because you literally do not have to worry about anything going muddy. And it's fun seeing like the texture. Like I really enjoyed this. And now I'm like, I want to do like swatches of every single distress color. I really should have been doing this anyway. But after playing with this, I was like, this was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I got ink all over myself, but yeah. So I did a second piece with the candied apple this time because I just really was liking how this turned out and just kept like I used up every little bit of the ink and water on my my um, craft mat to get those little backgrounds. And then once those were fully dry, I die cut them with those little wafer heart dies. So I've got, you know, my faceted heat embossed painted hearts and then I have the one the pink ones and the red ones from the ink smushing. So I've got all that. 
Now I want to work on my card front, which is just some um, Simon's Smooth White cardstock. And then I'm going to take this border stamp from the Botanical Heart set. The stamp I just, I love. I don't know what it is. There's just something about like the floral set and then the heart shape and sentiments. And then there's just this like simple geometric set of stripes that I just, I love it. So I used my little L shaped ruler from the Misty Creative Corners just to move my cardstock up and keep it all in place. And then I made sure I got that stamp straight and I'm doing the same thing. Anti-static powder, brushing away the excess. And then I inked up the stamp with clear embossing ink. I'm going to press it onto the cardstock and then I'm going to heat emboss this with that same gold embossing powder. So once I've got that pressed into place, coat it with the embossing powder and then melt it with my heat tool. And again, started thinking about adding splatter and all those things. This card took me longer than normal because I literally kept thinking, I was like, splatter, add splatter. No, don't add splatter. Add splatter. <laughs> Should I add splatter? I didn't. I know, shocking, but... I didn't this time. So it's just rule of thumb with me. My next card, I'm going to have like five layers of splatter. But anywho, after I did that, I took a scrap of the same smooth white cardstock, put it in my Misty, and I'm just stamping one of the little sentiments from that set. Same thing, anti-static powder tool, stamping it with clear embossing ink, and I'm going to heat emboss it with that gold embossing powder. Once I have this one embossed, I wanted to... Um, color this cardstock because I wanted to bring more of the pink into what will be the finished card. So, so I rather than like go through my stash and find, you know, pink cardstock to match, I just trimmed down the little sentiment and then I just used that Kitsch Flamingo Distress Ink and just grabbed one of my little blending brushes and quickly blended that onto this little sentiment strip. So now it's pink. So, and it was, and even then, even though it's the same ink, it's funny. And this is what I'm talking about with swatches. Like, when you do swatches, especially with distress inks, you should have like a stamp swatch, a blended swatch, and then an ink smushed swatch. Because these inks look different depending on what you're putting them on, different card stocks as well, different techniques, adding water, etc. So anyhow, that, that's also in the back of my mind is like all the like swatching and organizing I need to do. But anywho, back to the card. So I've got everything kind of together. I have a little sentiment that I die cut as well. I'll get to that in a second. Um, the card front, I decided to trim down to be smaller than my A2 card base. And then this thanks sentiment is from the small script trio wafer die set. And like I do with word, um, word wafer dies, I die cut it three times from black cardstock and then stack them together with craft tacky loose. So it got, gives it, you know, that dimension that I really like. And then I also trimmed down just a scrap of black cardstock. I just, I felt like the card, it needed a little bit more black with this color challenge and just to, you know, ground everything in a sense. So I just trimmed down a little strip, trimmed on an angle, and I'm just going to adhere that to the card base with some craft tacky glue. And then I also pulled out some pink Baker's twine from my stash. I am running out. This is doodle about Baker's twine. I'll link to a similar one by May Arts. It's a massive roll that I actually just recently ordered. Um, it's a little bit thicker than the doodle bug twine, but the May Arts Baker's twine is really nice as well. Just you guys know me. I love my Doodlebug twine. I need to get more of it. All other colors. I love everything Doodlebug. Anyhow, wrap that around the card front. Used my reverse tweezers to hold that knot in place and then tied my little bow and then left the tails nice and long because I like that too. And then now I'm going to start like actually assembling everything onto my card front. So those two main hearts that I did at the beginning, I adhered them, you know, kind of staggered them and adhered them with some craft tacky glue. And then I coated the back of them with just some thin 3D foam squares. So it gives it just a little bit of dimension, but not a ton. And I'm going to pop those into place onto the card front. And then I'm going to use some of those die cut ink smushed hearts just to kind of finish everything off. And those I'm going to adhere with just, again, some craft tacky glue. So they're just flat to the card front. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the die cut sentiment. Um, because those faceted hearts aren't popped up with like regular foam tape, they're not super high off. So I just use craft tacky glue to adhere the die cut sentiment because I was not about to fiddle with trying to add any sort of dimension to the back of that sentiment. And it works just fine. 
So I pop that into place with the craft tacky glue and then the little sentiment strip. I just cut down the little thin 3D foam squares to pop that into place right underneath. So it says, so the card says, thanks, my heart is full. Cause again, it's kind of Valentine-y, but not really. Like this is just an open-ended card. Cause thank you cards is something I never have enough of. So once I was done the card front, I used my uh, 3M like Scotch foam tape on the back of this. I don't use this foam tape very often. Um, it is one of the easiest foam tapes to use cause you can just tear it and it works great. I just, it's thicker than the Big Mama foam tape I always use from Simon, but depends on my mood. So this time I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna pop this up a little bit more and give it more dimension. So set that aside for a second. On the inside of the card, I stamped another sentiment from the Botanical Heart set, just using some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And then I adhered a few more of those ink smushed hearts just to finish off the inside. And then I'm gonna pop the card front into place onto my card base. And then as a final little bit of embellishment, I have these black pearls from Little Things by Lucy's Cards. So I kind of sprinkled those around the hearts just to kind of finish everything off. So once I was kind of happy with the placement of the pearls and just uh, people ask me about this, generally it's kind of the rule of three odd numbers, triangles, somewhat. Those are the general you know, visual rules when it comes to placing embellishments, but honestly, I just place them how I think they're gonna, like whatever works for you. So I adhered those into place and then I pulled out a Schoolhouse Red metallic envelope from my stash to go with this, just to finish off all the shimmer and the red and the fabulousness. And that finished off my card. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have a supply list. All that info is in the description box below the video with all the links. You can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.